The danger with the European Army proposal is that there is no court to whom anyone in Europe can appeal if their, if their governing class decides to go down this route. Because then that common European army will be established. And let us be quite clear, its aim is not to do what NATO does, to protect the member states of NATO so that if any one of those states is invaded... Its aim is to keep countries within so the they system. They admit. To and come to its aid. This is an internal army designed to suppress the will of the people and keep them cowering in fear and to kick down the door just like the KGB if the people disagree with them. That is what the European army is about. That's why uh, they, they want a European army as well as NATO, because NATO already deals with the external defense of Europe. It's NATO that's kept the peace and kept the Russians and everybody else at bay. So why do they need a European army as well as NATO? Answer, because NATO is explicitly forbidden to police the internal affairs of member states. It and member states to contribute to NATO. NATO. It's, it's not commanded by NATO itself. So it goes back to the more republic uh, strategy, uh, but in a military coalition, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Now, Lord Moncton, we're going to skip this network break so we have more time. I wanted to get Kit Daniels briefly, one of our writers that's been writing about this, uh, and, and we have another writer, um, Clifford Cunningham, who wrote about this last week, proposed EU army hidden from British voters until after Brexit. And, and then right after they they bring it out, uh, just showing the amazing stealth of this. Kit Daniels? Yes, Alex. Uh, yesterday, uh, it was on Thursday, I believe, I posted this article from our new guy, uh, Clifford Cunningham. And now this is before Brexit even happened. He said that as citizens of the United Kingdom prepare to cast their votes in a nationwide referendum to decide whether or not to leave the European Union, a plan detailing the initial framework of the creation of the EU <coughs> army is being kept hidden from the public until the day after the vote. So now the EU bureaucrats are claiming that this whole EU army program is a response to Brexit, but this proves that it was not at all. They had this plan for months. But that, exactly, but, but I mean, isn't it even more outrageous, Lord Monks, and then going back to Kit briefly? Daniels, that that their answer is, we're not going to let you leave. I mean, I'm reading the draft of it, and it says, we're going to keep you in. We're one shared common group. Basically, we're going to make it harder for you to leave. They're admitting that, hey, you didn't get to vote to enter this. We're this unelected, the, and we're going to let you leave. Now, this, this European army idea has, in fact, been kicking around for a long time, and it's been gathering dust, but also gathering momentum among the totalitarian left, because they, since the, the fall of fascism and communism, the left have not had armies like that of Hitler and of Stalin at their disposal, and so they want, they, they realize now they cannot out-argue us, they cannot speak against democracy and expect to be heard by democracy. They tried that. And even with all the elites backing only one side of the vote, it's the other side, the democratic side, that carried the day in Britain. So now, although I was born in a democracy, I do not live in one, I shall die in one. So the British people have won that. But the response, it's not a response to Brexit, this European army plan. It's been around for, for actually at least... 15 years it's amazing. and gathering momentum all that time. And as I say, the significance of this European army and the fact that only now are they admitting the latest stage in its development is they knew perfectly well that there will be an even larger negative vote against the EU sure. if this come out in public. This just shows how little they care for how ordinary people think.